Hi, my name is Shelly Hull and I teach chemistry on South Campus. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about how I had an exercise that the instructions I gave were not quite accurate and it almost derailed the entire activity before it ever got started. So I had found an activity at the end of one of the textbook chapters and it sounded a, like a great activity, go over a little bit of the course material and allow some classroom talk in small groups. So each person individually would have the, a sheet to work from and you have person number one fill in their part and then you pass it to person number two, then they pass it to person number three, they pass it to number four and then you have some discussion. And it's intended to be like terms and definitions in groups of four, if you have um, a room where you can move the furniture around or your students are in quads, it would work great. You could just um, do the instructions as they indicated. Well, I changed mine to element and symbol. So the first person would have the name and give the symbol. Person number two would only see the symbol and they would give the name. Person number three would only see the name and give the symbol. Person number four would only see the symbol and give the name. And then either that person or it goes back to the original person and you would see if the names that we started with was the same name we ended up with. If fine, everyone knew that element. If not, find where the error or errors occurred. So in this example, someone got silver and gold symbol incorrect. So the idea is not that you would criticize whoever made the mistake, but you would find the mistakes, correct it, make sure each person in the group knew the correct four terms or elements in my case. And so I'm in a tiered lecture hall, so I knew I was going to have to change my instructions for um, going from person one, two, three, and four, and the discussion might need to be a little bit different because of the way the setup would be. So I thought I had it all planned in my head, pass it to the left, that they could pass it behind them if they're on the end of the row, um, the person on the right could pass it forward, and I had it thought out, but when I gave the instructions, I let the students pick their own element, so that person number one filled in the element and the symbol, and when it went to person number two, I had asked everyone to pass it to the right. So row one was, as expected, pass it to the person behind them, but two through five, the person on the right end, ended up having a sheet passed to them from somebody in front of them and from their left, so they had two sheets. And then everyone that was on the left end, so all five rows, didn't have a sheet. And so the person at the end had, who had the extra sheet, we had to shuffle it down to the other end. So that nearly derailed the whole activity. So with elements and symbols, the whole four-person exchange should have taken maybe five minutes, and we probably spent five minutes on the first exchange. But we kept going, and I figured it out. Row one, three, and five needed to go to the left. Two and four go to the right. So the second and and third time we passed the sheet, it was much better. And I only had to get the back left to the front right. So that still had some logistics issues with having a tiered lecture hall for the classroom, but we were able to sort through it. Now the other error that I figured out after, um, one I did ask the question as one of the discussions, how many times or how many of you saw the same element more than once. But when I collected the sheets and looked over it, I realized that out of a list of 60 elements and over 40 students in the class, I probably only saw 10 elements from the entire list. So most students on the same row were using the same element. So hydrogen and oxygen were used many times. So the next section that I attempted it in I had my instructions more clear as to which direction to pass. 
I also filled in the name of the element for them. So there was a little bit more variety. No one on the same row would see the same element twice. And then instead of having to go all the way across the room, I was able to have some extra sheets available with person number two, per person number three's response filled out. So when they were shifting the sheets, for person number two and number three, the first person at the front of the room, I just gave them a new sheet where they could continue and the person on the back row just with the extra sheets that when they didn't have someone to pass it to could just turn it over. So as much as we sometimes think we have things planned out, we may run into mistakes where things don't work out quite as well as we planned. Um, but give it a try, keep going. The students may be able to figure it out and give yourself a little extra time the first time you try something or when you're with a new group of students who might not understand the instructions. Maybe run your instructions um, by another person, a, one of your students or a colleague and see if they understand it the way you intend for the activity to go. Thank you for listening.